Okay, well, as promised, we're going to think about what the Bible says about gifts or presents. And really, when we look at the Bible and what the Bible says about gifts or presents, there are three categories that we could uh, group those things into. Uh, We see in the Bible gifts that people give to other people. There's not very much of that in the Bible, but there is a little bit of it. We'll touch on that just briefly. Uh, There are also gifts that people offer to God. And there's an awful lot of that in the Bible, as we'll see as we go through. And there's also gifts that God gives to people. And there's a lot of that in the Bible, too. So we're going to spend most of our time on the last two points and just one or two minutes on that first, uh, looking at uh, how people give gifts to one another. So I'll give you a couple of examples of how uh, uh, the Bible talks about giving gifts Uh, from one person to another person. In the book of Genesis, in chapter uh, 32, uh, there's a story there about Jacob and Esau. Uh, Some of you may remember that Jacob and Esau had fallen out. Jacob had tricked his brother Esau. Esau got really mad about it. Jacob had to flee for his life. But eventually, Jacob wanted to come home. And on his way home, uh, by the time he'd been away, he'd become a very rich man. And he was worried that uh, Esau wouldn't, uh, wouldn't want him to come back, that he'd still be mad with him. So uh, what Jacob uh, did was he gave Esau a load of gifts uh, in order uh, that, uh, uh, according to Genesis 32 and verse 8, I might appease him with the present or the gift that goes ahead of me, and then afterwards I shall see his face. Perhaps he will accept me. Now, this is uh, very common thinking. Uh, uh, If we're not careful, uh, this can become a bribe, can't it? And uh, that's obviously something that the Bible uh, condemns. But uh, Jacob uh, here uh, was was worried, and he thought, well, I know that gifts have got the power to to improve a relationship, so that's what I'm going to um, send uh, straight away. Uh, We get examples in the Bible, lots of examples of people uh, who, who think that way, um, and then somebody says, I'm, I don't want your gift. I don't, I don't want your, your gift. Uh, because uh, it's important, isn't it, that the gift doesn't become uh, the be-all and the end-all. The relationship itself um, is what is important. So we find this in the, in the Bible. Gifts having this uh, ability to reflect the relationship. Jacob was given it to his brother Esau, his twin brother, but also a gift change in the relationship just as we talked about um, earlier on well there we are i said that first point was going to be short just a minute or two that's all i want to say about that because what i really want to focus on is gifts uh, to god or from god and i want to uh, think first of all about gifts to god gifts that people give to god and we're going to think about this through the I'm going to start in the Old Testament, in the book of Genesis, where we find uh, the first example of this. Uh, Genesis chapter 4, for example, where we read about Cain. Do you remember who Cain was? Okay, one of the sons of uh, Adam and Eve. And it, uh, Genesis 4 verse 3 says, In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering, we could say gift, of the fruit of the ground. And Abel also uh, brought of the firstborn of and of their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering. So here was a a gift uh, from Cain and Abel to God. Two different gifts. And if you know the story, you'll know that uh, God uh, accepted the gift that uh, Abel had brought, but not the gift that Cain had brought. And uh, do you remember I said um, earlier when we were talking about how we give gifts to one another and how they reflect the relationship? And I said, if I rummage around in the junk drawer and just give whatever without really thinking about the person that I'm giving to and what they might require or need, then that person is is, uh, not going to think that I think very much of the relationship. And that's kind of a little bit uh, as it was uh, for Cain um, and for Abel. That uh, uh, Cain, uh, he, he just brought an offering of the fruit of the ground. Uh, it doesn't say to us that he thought it through, that he brought the best that he could. It doesn't tell us that. It probably means he didn't do that. 
just did the equivalent of rummaging around in the junk drawer and giving whatever. And of course, that reflected his relationship with God. He didn't think very much of God, perhaps, whereas Abel had a high regard for God, and God, therefore, was able to receive um, his offering. Uh, we find, actually, throughout the um, Old Testament that um, there's many, 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 many examples of people bringing their offerings or gifts to God. Uh, Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 1 um, explains this to us a little bit. It says, uh, every high priest chosen from, a young, from among men is appointed to act on behalf of men in relation to God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. And this is the kind of most important uh, aspect of uh, offering gifts and sacrifices to God. This is how do it. And this is still part of our culture. Uh, this is something that men especially tend to do. Uh, uh, very often, uh, when we find things that are pervasive in the culture, they've got a kind of fragment of truth to them, uh, but uh, maybe not quite anchored in reality as much as we would like. So if you've ever had the experience, men, of, I don't know, uh, calling into the garage on the way home to buy some flowers to try and appease your wife for something that you've said or done, this is the, this is the kind of where the instinct comes from, uh, that gifts can be a great way of saying sorry and demonstrating that you mean that you're sorry. Now, again, we said earlier, didn't we, that uh, uh, if that ever falls into bribery, uh, then that's a, that's a bad thing. Uh, but actually, to try and demonstrate uh, that you're really sorry about something, then a gift, particularly it's a gift of yourself, uh, can be a really helpful way uh, to do that. And gifts should be costly in that sense, shouldn't they? They should be costly. They should be sacri sacrificial. So we find that uh, men... Uh, gave gifts or offerings to God um, uh, as uh, an offering for sin, as a means to, to demonstrate that they were sorry. Uh, but we also find that um, gifts can be used as a thank offering as well as a sin offering. There's all, again, all sorts of examples of this. I want to go to a New Testament example, though, uh, given that it's Christmas. Uh, think about the, uh, the wise men uh, coming uh, to Jesus and they fell down and worshipped him, and then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts. Frankincense and myrrh, that's Matthew chapter 2 and verse 11. So we have in there this uh, idea again that uh, the gifts then are part of their worship of God, uh, their praise and honor and thankfulness to God for this uh, child, and their thankfulness and worship of the child himself. Amazing for these uh, wise men uh, who had come from such a distance and probably didn't have a, a, a deep understanding um, of the Bible and uh, everything that had been uh, prophesied about. But they, they knew who this, who this boy was and they offered gifts. So we find um, this idea um, right uh, throughout the Bible, but especially in the Old Testament. This idea that uh, uh, we give gifts to God as an offering for sin and as uh, a thank um, offering too. And of course, as we talked about earlier, uh, our gift giving reflects our relationships. So those people who offered those gifts, uh, if they did so with, a, with an open uh, heart, were demonstrating that they wanted a relationship with God. That's why they brought their offerings along. That's why they gave their sacrifices, because they wanted to repair their relationship with God. And they weren't, I don't think, so foolish to think that uh, God was really desperate for this uh, sheep or cow or lamb or whatever, and, uh, well, this is really going to please God. Now he's got an extra sheep to add to his collection. That's not what they thought at all, was it? But they realized that this was a, a demonstration, something that cost them, that would demonstrate that this wasn't just words, but it was something that they really meant. Uh, and we often say this, don't we? And again, this is one of those things that's got its kind of heart and root in, in good theology that God has put in all of our hearts. We'll often say something like adults uh, particularly, well, it's the thought that counts. It's the thought that counts. It, in some ways, it doesn't matter, does it, uh, that uh, if you've got a gift that isn't quite what you want or happens to be the same as what somebody else has bought you and you've already got, and maybe you're something that you, you can't even need or you don't need. 
But it's the thought that counts. And we mean that. It really is. It's the thought that counts, particularly when we're given of ourselves. And that's what these people were doing uh, out of their uh, heart for a relationship with God. And because that relationship wasn't quite as good as uh, it needed to be and they wanted it to be, they were motivated then to bring these gifts to try and help restore that relationship and demonstrate how they felt. And as a consequence, those gifts did change the relationship with God because God was gracious, accepted those gifts. Now again, this is, this is not a bribe here. Uh, what's happening is people bring these gifts to God. Uh, God's acceptance of those gifts is demonstrating his acceptance of that person. So imagine this situation. Imagine that you'd got me a gift and you came up to me after the service and said here's my gift for you and I looked you in the eye and said I don't want it not from you how would you feel you'd be incredibly hurt wouldn't you because you would know that my refusal of that gift was actually a refusal of you as a person but if I looked you in the eye and said oh thank you so much I really appreciate that and uh, showed some uh, uh, excitement or pleasure over it then that would make you feel good and make you feel that there's a good relationship there and that's what God is doing he, he doesn't need the lambs and the goats and all of that stuff he doesn't need any of that it's all his anyway but as he accepts that from his people in the Old Testament he's demonstrating to them that he accepts them as people this is the beauty and the glory at least in part of the Old Testament sacrificial system the bit that we sometimes miss that this is God demonstrating his acceptance of them um, as people. So, that's a, a little brief overview of uh, what the Bible talks about, about us giving gifts to God and why that can be uh, such a, a good thing. We could make some application here, couldn't we, in terms of the way that we give gifts to God today. We don't have to lay our lambs on the altar, thankfully, and all of that. But God still does require of us doesn't he he still asks us to offer ourselves as living sacrifices giving things that are important to us our money our time our affections our whole self and actually the most important thing in some ways about that about those gifts and not the fact that we give them that's not the most important thing, crucial though that is. The most important thing, the most amazing thing, is that God accepts them. He accepts them. He accepts them from us. And as he accepts our love and our service and our sacrifice, as he accepts those things, he's demonstrating to us how he accepts us in the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, the final thing then that I want us to think about this morning is gifts from God. Gifts from God. We've talked already about gifts from people to people and gifts to God. We're going to finish by thinking about gifts from God. If you look through your whole Bible, I don't mean you have to read every word, but if you kind of flick through either mentally or literally with a Bible, as I've been doing over the last uh, few days, uh, this is one thing that really struck me as I flick through the Bible from beginning to end, thinking about gifts uh, from God and gifts to God, what I found was that the Old Testament especially seemed to be, I won't say full, but there was an awful lot of gifts to God in the Old Testament offerings and sacrifices and all that kind of stuff there was an awful lot of that in the old testament not to say for a moment that god didn't give good gifts to his people in the old testament but the way that the story is recorded and the amount of time that's spent on the different aspects there's an awful lot about god's people giving gifts to god and then when we flip across to the new testament we find it it flips over that in the new testament period there's an awful lot about god giving gifts to his people now again i don't want to suggest that in the old testament sorry in the new testament uh, people don't give gifts to god they clearly do we've had a little bit of application about that already but in the way that the story is told in the emphasis that's given the emphasis in the new testament is very much on the gifts that god has given to his people and continues to give 
uh, to his people. Gifts from God. Gifts from God. Well, what sort of gifts does God give us? Now, here's an interesting thing. One of them, uh, and the perhaps one that uh, um, uh, a certain part of the church maybe would, uh, uh, would really uh, come to mind, was what we call spiritual gifts, gifts of the Spirit, spoken about in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, among other places. Uh, let me read some verses from that chapter for you. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 4. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are varieties of service, but the same Lord. Varieties of activities, the same God who empowers them all in everyone. Uh, the I idea is this, that God, by his Spirit, gives gifts to his people. And these are gifts that are not gifts of um, uh, money or physical things that you might see, but these are gifts that, well, what are those spiritual gifts? What are those spiritual gifts of 1 Corinthians chapter 12? What are they for? Well, I think Peter actually really helps us by an to answer that question. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. As each has received a gift, use it. Does anyone know what comes next? Use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. This is what God does. He gives gifts, spiritual gifts, gifts empowered by the Spirit. So as the Holy Spirit comes into our lives, when we trust in Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit changes us and gives us power to do things that we wouldn't have been able to do before. Now, that doesn't mean we become Spider-Man or something like that. Uh, it means that we're able to worship God in a way that we couldn't worship before, that we're able to serve God in a way that we couldn't serve before. And God gives us these gifts. Why does he give us these gifts? He gives us these gifts so we can serve other people. And therefore, in the church then, uh, we're all able to serve one another because of the gifts that God has given us. And this is, a, this is a wonderful, beautiful thing. If God gives you a gift, a spiritual gift, it's not because he wants you to be powerful. It's not because he wants you, if I can put it like this, to be special in some way and superior. Oh no, that's not what spiritual gifts are for. It's that he wants you to serve. That he wants you to serve. And he's empowering you and enabling you to help other people. To, to be an instrument in his uh, hands. To be able to bring about change in you so that you can then help bring about change in the church, in wider society. Spiritual gifts are an incredible blessing from God. But you could argue that that's not the most important gift that the New Testament speaks of. Because we read about Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8. Some of you will have learned that verse off by heart. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not of your own doing. It's what? It is the gift of God. You see, before we can enjoy those uh, spiritual gifts that we talked about, we need to receive this gift of salvation. And that's what it is. If you're a Christian here this morning, it's because God has given you the gift of salvation. It's a free gift. Romans 6, 23, the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Romans chapter 5 and verse 17 talks about the free gift of righteousness that will reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Now, here's the amazing thing, and I hope you're spotting a pattern here. Okay, about how God gives gifts. We talked about spiritual gifts earlier on. How does God give us those gifts? Well, he gives us those gifts through the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 4, there were varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. The same Spirit. How does he give us the gift of salvation? Do you remember what Romans 6.23 is? The free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus 
our Lord. Romans 5.17, the free gift of righteousness that reigns in life. Do you remember what it said? Through the one man, Jesus Christ. Got to get this. This is the most amazing thing of all. All right? How does God give us gifts? He gives us what? Himself. Can you see it in the text? He gives us Himself. How do we get spiritual gifts? Because God gives us His Spirit. How do we get salvation, the gift of salvation? Because He gives us the gift of His Son. That's how we receive gifts. Do you remember earlier on that I was saying that what makes a gift really special, what gifts makes a gift really valuable, is not how much money somebody spends on it. Who cares about that? What makes a gift special, what makes it matter, is when we give what? Ourselves. And what does God give to his people? Himself. Himself. Acts chapter 2, verse 38, very famous verse again. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins. And what? You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. He gives us himself. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Jesus Christ with every spiritual blessing. These are gifts. Esther's. We talked earlier about how giving reflects a relationship and changes a relationship. We give to God in our own little ways, imperfectly, probably sometimes, if we're honest, a little half heartedly, sometimes maybe more full heartedly. We're not giving much, but we're giving what we can. We're giving, I trust ourselves and it's amazing it really is amazing that God receives those gifts he takes us not just our money or our time he takes us and even more amazing than that is that he gives us he gives himself to us he gives himself that's why we give gifts at Christmas, as a recognition and as a, a pattern, if you like. We're following the pattern of our Creator. It doesn't matter how much we've spent, but it does matter that we give of ourselves. It does matter that our gifts are received. It does matter that we receive the other person, as it were, in return. And how beautiful, how incredible. And how glorious that that's how God, our Heavenly Father, treats us as his children.